Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. It is Kush back at it again with another New York Giants video and shout out to my Rumble subscribers as well. Uh, you guys mean a lot to me. What could we have possibly learned from the Giants versus Philadelphia Eagles game regarding to our offense? Because in that game, we had our new offensive coordinator, Freddie Kitchens calling plays of course we did fire jason garrett last week and in my video talking about that topic i did state even though jason garrett was part of the problem with the new york giants specifically their offense he was far from the only problem and we have the rest of the season to see how much getting rid of him and, and promoting freddie kitchens really does fix uh with that being said of course freddie kitchens it was his first week in that position for this season you know so there's you can't expect him to fix every single problem with the offense but what you're trying to see is if there's you know little steps that are being made forward is there signs of progress and whatnot and that's what i'm here to talk about in this particular video now the first major thing from the offense that everybody with eyes would notice is that we still scored just 13 points the Giants remain i i have to say probably the worst offense in the entire league by production or at least that's what it feels like, but we're actually the 26th overall offense in the league. We did have a couple of games where we did score more than uh, 20 points, and that's kind of what's keeping us afloat. This 13-point outing against the Philadelphia Eagles was actually our third lowest on the season, the lowest being 10 against Tampa Bay just the week before, and other than that, 11 during week six, where we were faced with a lot of injuries versus the Los Angeles Rams. But what this 13-point shows is that one of the major problems of the Giants still remains. That is red zone offense. We get down into the red zone, and we saw this while the giants were playing the eagles you, you could see it with your eyes there's no need for stats to tell you this we get down into the red zone and our offense just comes to a halt this wasn't even a problem just under jason garrett this has been a problem for the giants for a good amount of years now i mean i'd say at least five since 2017 maybe even before that um even in 2016 when we went to the playoffs that was a team heavily carried by its defense um with the offense very similarly couldn't really score that much so of course, no, this wasn't going to be a problem that Kitchens was going to fix just within a week. And I'll be honest with you, I don't even know if it's a problem he could fix by the end of the season with six games to go. Given how long we've had it, I'd be really happy if he could. And we did see some steps, like I'm saying, some signs of progress towards fixing it, uh, primarily with using Kenny Galladay, with just tossing him the ball in the red zone. There were two players we signed this offseason that were supposed to be great red zone threats for us, and that would help us score more. One of them was Kenny Galladay, the other was Kyle Rudolph. I believe Kyle Rudolph was injured during this game. We targeted Kenny Galladay twice in the red zone, or in the end zone, I should say, this game. Both of them would fade routes. Both of them, you know, were kind of controversial pass deflections, pass defended, and whatnot. One of them kind of looked like a, a, a pass interference that didn't get called. The other one, there was a little bit of hand fighting going off. That's besides the point. What is the point is that I don't know if we've seen Kenny Galladay targeted in the red zone that much this year, which has been a misfiring on Garrett's part, but it's something that Kitchens made a part of his game plan. In fact, just targeting Kenny at all. He made part of his game plan he had seven targets this game which allowed him to uh rack up his third best you know yard total on the season the second best being 68 yards during uh, i mean 64 yards during week one off of six targets and 116 yards for the best during week four with seven targets uh his highest target of the season was, was week two but just before that, uh, Kenny hasn't really been seeing the ball. In fact, against Tampa Bay, there was only two targets to him. Against the Raiders, there was three. It's been a major complaint of this Giants offense all season, not just with Kenny Galladay, just using our receivers. Uh, now, part of that is because the receivers aren't necessarily healthy, but when they are in there um, and you suit them up for a game that they themselves suit up for a game, they have their helmet on, they got their uniform on, I say all the time, use them don't put if you're gonna put them out there and you already risk them being re-injured might as well use their talents might as well toss the ball towards them and of course there was a bunch of rumors circulating essentially since week two of the season that Kenny Galladay didn't exactly like Jason Garrett or that he's fed up with the Giants offense once again these are rumors because of his lack of targets and lack of involvement so it's very clear that they made that a point to correct during this game another point that they made to correct was the run game now this is a lot of it on the offensive line. It's no secret that our offensive line is not good. It is also no secret that, you know, that's because of lack of talent and that's because of injuries as well. But with the run game, 
you look once again just at Tampa Bay, you look at the fact that the Giants didn't run the ball that much, they didn't hand it off to Saquon Barkley that much, who at this point in his career, he isn't what he once was, but you need to give him a good amount of runs to get into the groove of things, to you know try and find his footing. Uh, much like against the Saints game, like during that game, which was his best game of the season, it seems like the more he ran, the more he was getting comfortable, the more he was producing. Against Tampa Bay, the total running, you know, so that's Saquon, Booker, you know, Daniel, John Ross, those were the four guys that had the ball in the run game. We only ran the ball 13 times. And if you can't establish the run for your quarterback, nothing's going to happen. Even if it's not exactly producing, still do it, you know, to try and keep the defense honest. But we only ran the ball 13 times through with 38. Definitely a big disparity there. Against the Philadelphia Eagles, we ran the ball 27 total times. Way higher. And we passed the ball 30. So you talk about a balanced attack, that's as balanced as you can get and of those 27 times that we ran the ball at least half of them 13 of them to be exact was with Saquon he went 13 for 40 of course he had the one big run that kind of really skews his stats a little bit but they're getting Saquon Barkley and they're getting the run game involved a bit more as well whether or not this balanced attack holds up for the rest of the season and whether or not they continue to try and get the run game going is something we'll have to observe but at least for his first game here in Freddie Kitchens, I, I really like what he's doing in that aspect. Another point that's going to be kind of hard for me to make, and this is honestly just subjective uh, to each person, is the creativity that Kitchens had. Now, Garrett wasn't exactly as stale as a lot of people made him out to be. He did have a couple of creative plays in his arsenal with the end arounds, with the Kadarius Tony throws and whatnot. And the problem with those, though, is that he kept doing them over and over again. He, It's like he pulled out one or two tricks out of his bag and he just kept reusing them. And he used them so much to the point that defenses knew when they were going to happen. And by the end of his tenure here, whenever he tossed the ball to Kadarius Tony, everybody knew that Tony was going to pass it. And then it ends up being a loss of yards or something like that. With Kitchens, one game sample size, so not much to say. But I do like what I saw. Of course, I think the best example to use from the Philadelphia game would be when we had that tight end screen, which at first looked super weird because it was a flea flicker. So we all thought they were going to go deep. But then, no, the flea flicker turned into a tight end screen for Evan Ingram, which worked out great. I think he got like maybe a 15 yard gain on that play. He did have his mishaps, though. There was an end around with Darius Slayton, which lost us 13 yards, our only drive in that third quarter. And that entire quarter from Freddie Kitchens, uh, that drive has to be the worst offensive drive of Giants football I've seen all season or probably in a long, long time. You know, we did nothing but go backwards. A first and 10 became a second and 21. A second and 21 became a third and 23. It, it was pretty damn ridiculous. And that just goes to show like, no, Freddie Kitchens is not as of yet a improvement over Garrett. I, I listed out the things that I liked from him, which were some of the problems that we had under our previous offensive coordinator. But for just one week, of course, there's still a lot of problems. There's still a lot of Garrett stuff that I'm seeing, which makes sense. Because, guys, he's not going to change the playbook. Even at the end of the season, he's not going to change. You're halfway, you're 12 weeks into a season. That's going to be near impossible to do. He's going to just basically choose the plays from that playbook and order them in such a way that, you know, we have a better offensive game plan. And with those things that I listed, it might have been small, but I do feel like we could make some progression towards the future and there was things that didn't even necessarily happen during the game before the game you know it was the first time ever daniel jones wore uh, you know the play calling wrist wristband thingy i forgot what it's called but that was the first time in his career he's worn it and daniel jones himself to speak on him a little bit he showed a little things that i forgot he could do such as stepping up into the pocket when's the last time he did that properly choosing when to scramble and you know sliding for the most part he did that as well and he did go through his progressions a little bit better something else i hope that he can continue towards the end of the season we'll have to see but we saw steps from him as well but that's it for today guys you let me know what you thought about the offense what did you learn from it uh during this eagles game put your thoughts down below and i'm out thanks for watching don't forget to like comment subscribe and share i'll catch y'all in the next one